Welcome back. Today we are going to be taking a look at how to use and how to control the radars in the game. Because there's like 2000 radars in the game right now, I am not going to be covering every radar individually. I'm going to give you every tool necessary to control every radar in the game. This video took a tremendous amount of effort and I want to give a huge thank you to Jake, Jeek or maybe even Shrek. I really don't know how to pronounce it. I can almost go with Shrek. So feel free to stop by his channel. He makes some absolutely a great content. And if you are looking for breakdowns, you should be at the right place over there. Now, before you instantly click on the video to check out his channel, please consider clicking all the buttons down below so that we know we are on the right track and that this video has helped you out with your radar usage. Let's get started with controls and you are going to absolutely hate this answer because it's whatever you find convenient to use. If you have something set up, you don't fat finger your keys, you don't mispress anything, then you're good to go. If you do have issues with it, then here are my recommendations. I recommend using the numpad on the right. If you don't have this, try to set something up with a multiplier, something like an alt key, control key, something that is accessible, but something you won't really need in the tick of battle. There are two key binds, however, which are absolutely necessary. These two binds are lock radar on target and radar beyond dash within visual range combat. Make sure to actually put these somewhere within reach as you will probably be using these the most and these are the most accessible radar items. These don't have a big learning curve and I basically advise everyone to run these if you can be asked actually fiddling with the radar too much. Then we have a few controls which are not absolutely necessary but they are definitely convenient and these controls will include select radar target to lock, change radar mode, change radar search mode and switch between radar and IRST. The other controls included here are not really necessary and you can for the most part kind of just forget about them. You can use them if you really want to and if you really don't have any controls here, you don't have a keyboard, you're playing on the controller, you can always use the multifunction menu to access a lot of these options that your radar actually has. If you actually aren't comfortable with your controls, you can always try to rearrange them, try to get a fit with something that you want. You are gonna be using these keys a hell of a lot and if you keep fat fingering them or something else that makes them inconvenient, just try to cycle them around until you find something that you are actually happy with. After you have your control set up, you can go to air battle settings in the option menu and you wanna turn on automatic radar admission start. This kind of explains itself, but it's very convenient to have so you don't have to press another button every time you start up your vehicle. Use your rectangular radar indicator. You can choose between conical and rectangular. The rectangular radar here is objectively simply better because it doesn't squeeze at the bottom making it a lot more convenient to actually read the radar for closer range targets. I just really hate the way it looks and that's why you see me rocking around with the actual conical one. Also make sure to turn on the options for cyclic switching as well as constant elevation and these will help simplify using the radar by quite a decent margin and this will also remove the need for some extra keybinds. And if you do want your radar to show up on your HUD when you go into the cockpit mode, or if you don't want it, you can toggle the use radar HUD in cockpit option. And if you really want to change the color of your radar, you can actually do so by changing the HUD color in the option menu. If you want to know what kind of radar your plane has, or if it even has one to begin with, you can go to the X-ray mode and look in the nose of the aircraft. If there is a radar, you can hover over it. It will give you the properties of the radar, some extra modes, some ranges which will help you paint a crude picture of what kind of radar it is. Do not, however, confuse RWR with radar. Yes, RWR will have the word radar in it. It's the radar warning receiver, which is a completely separate system, which we will be covering in a different video. But in very short, RWR is a passive system that detects radar waves. So it doesn't matter if it's a friendly or an enemy, this will pick it up. And this is a very necessary item that you will find on basically every top tier. All right, let's start with the search mode. Your search mode is where your radar constantly scans an area in front of you and shows you where detected targets are. This is your main radar display, which you can think of as a top-down view of your vehicle. And the center line of the radar matches the center line of your nose of your vehicle. Targets at the bottom of the display are 0 kilometers away and, and targets that appear all the way on the top of the display will appear at whatever range you set your radar to. So for example in this case the scale is set to 30 kilometers and as a target halfway up the display so that target is about 15 kilometers away from me. It also doesn't appear directly in the middle it's a little bit off to the right which will indicate that this vehicle is also not directly in front of us but is also a little bit to the right of our nose from the cockpit view. 
these ranges can be changed on a lot of the airplanes that you fly. If you see an asterisk right here next to the number, you can actually change the radar scope by pressing the change radar scope scale button to adjust the scale of your radar. If you set your vehicle to 20 kilometers, everything that's further than 20 will be off screen. However, if I set it to 170 kilometers, which you can do on some vehicles, all the information would be way too cluttered. Somewhere between 20 to 50 kilometers in general in RRB is more than sufficient to see everything in front of you without having to squeeze your nose against your screen because you set it to 170 and everything looks like one big radar target. However, the display ranges are presets and kind of plane dependent so you cannot always do exactly what you want and you just have to find something that actually suits your needs for RRB once you get into the vehicle and you see what ranges the vehicle actually has available to it. The other radar display that that you need to know about is the velocity display in velocity mode instead of a range on the top right you see a unit of speed left and right is still the same but the y-axis now shows relative velocity to the target instead of range so a target at the top of the display is closing rapidly towards you a target all the way at the bottom is rapidly flying away from you and an enemy or friendly that's in the middle of this band is basically not gaining or losing any distance on you this will start coming into play once we start talking about notching, but that's for another time. Then there is also the C-scope, which is found on a handful of older radars, which are secondary display that shows the azimuth and elevation. So if you imagine the main display as a top-down view, you can think of the C-scope as the view looking out the windshield. For example, a target down and to the right of the C-scope is down and to the right relative to your nose. On the other side here, we have the radar scan area in horizontal degrees by vertical degrees. And just like with range, if you can see the asterisk next to it, that will mean that it's adjustable and that you can change it with your change radar search mode keybind. To visualize your scan area, look outside your plane, and you'll see a horizontal line and a vertical line moving around. If you imagine the point where these two lines meet, you can draw a box around this to visualize where you are actually scanning so that the enemy is actually within the box to pick up on your radar. If you are using a very wide angle to sweep the area, it can actually be somewhat difficult to lock onto people with the radar because it doesn't update frequently enough. If you are trying to lock someone, or if you know where someone is, I advise you to use a narrower scope. And if you are just looking for general targets and you don't know where anyone is, you can use the wider scope as it's not as important to update frequently if you are simply looking for someone. When your radar detects something, it will show up as a thin horizontal line. Now, some radars have IFF, either identification of friend or foe, which causes friendly to show up as two horizontal lines, but not every radar has this. Most radars also get returns off the ground. This is called ground clutter, which shows up as a bright area on your display, kind of looks like fog. And if a target is inside of this clutter, then it will be very unlikely that your radar will get a solid lock on the guy, if it will even detect him in the first place. If you go to the hangar, hover over the radar and it says that it has BVR mode, then it means that you can lock people by selecting it on the radar. Locking targets is usually the only way to lock people at longer ranges. And to do this, you need to select target to lock and the lock radar on target keybind. Don't forget that the selected target has these two vertical lines next to it. So if you don't want to lock that specific one, you can press the select target to lock and it will cycle through it. You cannot go back and forth. You can only go forward. You can just keep pressing this until the desirable target is actually painted by the two lines. Some radars can actually only lock targets within a certain area, which is represented by a darker section of the display. And if you're having trouble locking people up, what you can do is you can switch to the narrow scope, as I mentioned earlier. And also remember to use the scan pattern visual that you have in front of your vehicle, that you can try to manipulate it so that it only scans the area that you're trying to get radar signatures from. If there's a lot of enemies in front of you and you're only trying to lock onto one, try to exclude as many of the vehicles that you're not trying to lock up so that your radar has an easier time and doesn't get overwhelmed. And that means that you don't have to cycle through as many targets to, to get to the vehicle that you are trying to lock up it's not uncommon to hit the lock key and have the radar try to get a lock and then return to the search mode because they fail to find a target if that happens you're probably either too far away or the target is flying in such a way that the radar can't see it which we will also cover a little bit later Locking this way in BVR can be pretty frustrating and pretty inconvenient, especially if you are in the middle of a little bit of a dogfight. So a better way to lock targets, which is very helpful in RRB, is with the ACM mode. 
ACM mode constantly scans a small area in front of your vehicle and it will lock the first target that it sees. The drawback to the ACM mode is usually that it's pretty limited in range, which is usually about 10 to 20 kilometers. So if you want to lock a target outside of that range or outside of this little box, you do have to go back to BVR mode. But the benefit to the ACM mode is that it's very convenient to use. Just put your nose on the target and the radar will automatically do all the work for you. The keybinds you use to enter ACM mode can change slightly depending on the radar. If your radar has both BVR and ACM mode, you can use radar beyond dash within visual range combat to enter and exit ACM mode when the radar is turned on. When you are in ACM mode, using the lock radar on target key will turn the radar on and off. For radars that have ACM mode but do not have BVR mode, using the lock radar on target keybind will toggle the ACM mode on and off as well. The nice thing about ACM mode, once you are in it, it's completely automatic and you don't really need to do anything other than point the box at the enemy you are trying to lock onto. If your enemy isn't being locked on, he is either too far away or he's flying in such a manner that the radar doesn't see him. A handful of radars also have alternative scan areas. This is like changing your scan area on BVR source mode and if you see an asterisk you can use change radar source mode to change the ACM area. The planes that have this function usually have a stupidly big or a stupidly tall ACM mode so it kind of gives it away even without the asterisk. A handful of jets also have the HMD mode. This is a helmet mounted display which is similar to ACM mode except it follows your mouse around instead of the nose of your vehicle. To enter the HMD mode you want to press the beyond within visual range combat key again until you actually have it appear. Normally it's behind the ACM mode. The HMD mode however doesn't automatically lock anything that you put in the box. When you look at someone and it's within the box you have to press the lock radar on target key. The HMD is super convenient and powerful to use so if you have HMD in your arsenal make sure to actually use it regardless of what mode you are using once you get a lock with it your radar will enter trk mode this is track mode you'll see a solid box around the target regardless of whether or not he is spotted next to the box is some additional information the upper numbers show the range and the lower numbers show the closure rate Below the target is a circular icon with an arrow that points into the direction the target is moving to relative to you. If the arrow is pointing down, the target is coming towards you. And if the arrow is pointing to the right, the target is moving to the right and so on. The radar can only tilt so far in any direction. So to maintain lock, you have to make sure to not break the gimbal limit. The gimbal limit is, as the name implies, basically where the radar can and can't aim. It has a designated area in which it can aim around. If it goes beyond that, your radar will not be able to look at your enemy and thus it will break lock. Other causes for locks to fail are chaff, which you can unlock by pressing the lock button again and then go for the target that you actually want to look at. And secondly, it can happen when the enemy flies in a defensive manner. Like the Mirage Dolls right here. Then we switch on over to the MiG-23. He also goes defensive and again, the radar will fail. Keep in mind, however, if you have an enemy locked up, this will set off their RWR, which we mentioned at the start. So if you are trying to sneak up onto someone, don't use your radar on him because you will just give him a warning. Those are all the radar controls that allow you to change how to search and lock targets. But some radars, especially at top tier, also have the ability to change how they actually function. This uses a separate control. This is called change radar mode, which allows you to switch between pulse, pulse doppler, MTI, TWS and stuff like that. Most radars only have access to one mode called pulse or sometimes non-pulse doppler which is the oldest and simplest form of radar. Pulse radar modes don't have anything added to the name so you will either just say SRC, ACM, HMD or TRK. Pulse radar sends out radar waves and listens for their returns. But because of this, it also gets returned from the ground, called ground clutter. So if a target is flying just above the ground, Pulse Radar will not be able to see it. The main advantage to the Pulse Radar is that it can lock onto your target no matter what direction it's flying at. However, it's also very easily defeated by chaff or by an enemy simply flying low to the ground to stay within the ground clutter so that the radar can't actually see you. A very quick mention to the SRC LD which is only available on the MiG-23 radar when you're at least 1800 meters above ground level. It's the same as the normal SRC mode except it tilts the scan pattern down a little bit making it essentially pointless. To solve the issues that the Pulse radar has with chaff and ground clutter they designed the Pulse Doppler radar which is basically only found on higher tier jets. 
You can recognize the Pulse Doppler modes by the PD that's somewhere in the name, like SRC PD or ACM PD. Pulse Doppler radar uses the relative speed of the target to detect and track it. This means that Pulse Doppler works even when someone is flying super low to the ground and it works best when the target is flying towards you in a head -on. This mode is also much more resistant against chaff. Overall it's a much more powerful mode and you should be using it most of the time if you have access to it. However it does have a few limitations. It can struggle to track targets from a rear aspect but more importantly it can't really see targets that are flying perpendicular to it. This is called notching and this is when they actually fly into that little band where it looks like they're not actually approaching nor flying away from you. But we will cover notching in another video when we are going to talk about going defensive against enemy missile. But as you might have noticed the non-pulse Doppler mode has an advantage that doesn't care about which direction your target is flying. So if your target is high enough and not using chaff you can switch back to the normal radar mode and still be able to track him. Some vehicles also have the ability to switch between these lock modes without breaking the lock itself which is a massive benefit and something you should definitely use whenever you can. And then we arrive at MTI or the moving target indicator mode. It's a more crude radar and it's essentially just a worse version of the Pulse Doppler that we have in the game. Like Pulse Doppler, it doesn't have any issues with ground clutter, but it can't really see targets that are notching it. It also tends to be a bit more sensitive to chaff, opposed to the PD mode that we just discussed. It's also more rare than Pulse Doppler, being found only on a handful of planes. The most notable ones being the MiG-23s and the Mirage F1s. On the MiG-23 it's only available below 1800 meters of altitude. There are no planes with MTI that also have Pulse Doppler, so if you have MTI, use it in the same manner as you would with the PD, as it's still most of the time a better option than the normal non-PD mode. Some radar modes have HDN added to the end of the name. This stands for head-on, and generally indicates that the mode is better suited for detecting targets in, you guessed it, a head-on. But on a lot of radars, you either have this option or you don't, and it's not something you can actually toggle, it's just something that's included with the mode that you have selected. With some planes, like with the MiG-29, the HDN mode actually has a massive dead zone, which is indicated by the non-rasterized portion of the radar. If an enemy is within this, your radar will not be able to see them, hence the name dead zone. And then we arrive at TWS, or the track while scan mode. It gives you some of the advantages of a lock without actually having to lock the enemy and setting off their RWR. When TWS picks up a target, it will snap onto it and you'll get a dash box around the target showing some additional information. When you see this, TWS is working and there is no need for you to use any more keybinds. You can use select target to lock to switch to another target and if you want to enter normal tracking lock, you can use lock radar on target. TWS might occasionally be useful if you want to track an unspotted target without setting off their RWR. But the main use for TWS is launching phoenixes across the map on the Tomcat at long ranges. Which is basically the only missile as of right now which can be fired with TWS. Expect the MRAM to do the same thing in the future, but as of right now only the Phoenix SRH missiles like the AIM-7 variants will not be able to use this mode to guide itself in. So, quick recap to make the distinction between the different radar modes. Because there are two keybinds and when you press either of them, the name of the radar mode changes. Radar beyond dash within virtual range combat changes how the radar acquires targets. Whether it's by BVR, ACM or HMD mode. Change radar mode changes the method that the radar uses to actually search and track targets. Like Pulse, Pulse Doppler, MTI and TWS. Radar gun sights are small, short ranged and very simple radars that don't really serve any use at all when it comes to ARB. Radar gun sights just have this small fixed display and the only control that you can use to interact with them is the lock radar on target key to turn them on and off. It will automatically lock whatever is in front of your vehicle, usually within 3 kilometers or so. But it doesn't really put a box around the target like a full featured radar would. Like I said, they are generally useless and can be ignored, but there are a few exceptions. On the Swift F7 for example, having a lock with your gun sight will try to guide the fire flash to the locked target. But doing so is actually worse most of the time, because sometimes your radar will try to lock onto the missile itself and the missile will go absolutely ballistic. So most of the time while playing the Swift F7, at least in the current patch, 
try to turn it off it will increase your results the fire flash in itself isn't that effective but you're just making it worse when the plane actually has uncaged missiles that can be slaved to the radar like with the j7e and the kefir you can then use the radar gun sight to radar slave the missiles without having to fiddle with your radar however this kind of defeats the purpose because the main strength of an ion missile is not giving them a warning and by doing this you're still giving them a warning making this feature also not that effective I saved IRSD for last because the controls and display are essentially the same as the radar. The difference between the radar and the IRSD is that the IRSD is a passive system that won't set off enemies RWR. But IRSD can show you the range of the target and it can't guide SRH missiles. To use IRSD, just use the switch between radar and IRSD keybind. Because there is no range info, the IRSD display is in a C scope, so it shows elevation on the Y axis instead of range. But other than that, using it is the same as using a radar. Depending on the IRSD, you can switch to narrow, scan, get locks in BVR mode, use ACM mode, or even use HMD IR. RST is good when you want to try detecting a target without setting off its RWR, for slaving IR missiles, making launching them a little bit more convenient or for using your gun targeting computer. On some planes you can lock with IRST and when you're ready to fire your semi-active use the switch between radar and IRST keybind to automatically transfer the lock type from an IRST lock to a radar lock allowing you to quickly switch and fire. And then we have radar slaving IR missiles. This is where you paint the target with your radar so that the IR missile knows where to look before you launch the missile. Now this is a common misconception but it does not improve the accuracy versus flares. It does help with pre-flaring because it will maintain a lock on the enemy vehicle. It however does not turn the IR missile into a semi-active radar homing missile just because you happen to have him locked up with the radar. It helps with aiming the missile before the launch. After that the radar does absolutely nothing anymore. But again it kind of defeats the purpose of an IR missile because it will give them a warning on the RWR. Then we have the radar gun sight and there's two variants of this the first one is on the main hut as you can see right here we have them locked up and the second you get within range you can see that the cursor will start bouncing around extremely accurate if the enemy is flying straight not so much when they are actively dodging because the lead indicator does not predict where they are going it only calculates where it's going to be if they maintain their particular flight path you also have a different cursor in the cockpit and you can access this by pressing 6 and then pressing 7 and then you can cycle through the options here until you get the two circles the one with the crosshair and one with the circle around the plane and the aim is to simply put the circle inside of the other circle and then if you squeeze the trigger it should connect of course if you're playing B, not very convenient it's also super annoying to aim with your mouse and that should be essentially everything if you have any questions feel free to let me know down below again big thanks and shout out to jack jake jeek or whatever you want to call it let's go with jack for supporting me helping me and basically giving me a super solid foundation to work and edit on so check him out and feel free to stay tuned for the next iteration of our radar video